Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. In today's video, I'm doing some French country Easter eggs. For my project today, I'm going to be using these clear Easter eggs that I got from Kmart Australia. My first step is to take some Gorilla Super Glue Gel. I'm adding a few little dots around the edge and I'm going to glue the two pieces together. I'll repeat this step for the three eggs that I'm going to be using. To prime the surface, I'm going to be using Paint Couture's 2-in-1 Primer in grey and I'm applying it with a little makeup sponge as this is going to give it more of an eggshell finish which is perfect for this craft but also you're not going to be able to see any brush strokes. I'm going to be doing two coats of this particular primer and you can use the white primer if you like. It does come in white as well. I'm just using grey because that's what I have open at the moment. After my primer had been dry for several hours, I took Paint Couture's Buttercream Chalk Paint and I started applying it with a paintbrush. However, I decided that I preferred the look of the makeup sponge, so I did switch to using one of these for the rest of the eggs. So I'm just going over the top of my brush strokes to get that sort of eggshell finish, and then I will continue applying the paint with that makeup sponge. And of course, I will be adding that same paint and technique to each of the other two eggs. It did take two and a half coats to get the coverage that I wanted. You may notice here that I also switched to using a little set of pliers there to hold the Easter egg attachment for hanging. It just made it a little bit easier for me to paint the egg doing it this way. Next, I'm going to be using AB Studios Beautiful Easter Rice Paper 4831. I just love these sweet little animals in the teacups. I'm going to tear the designs out that I want to use. We're going to be using a rabbit, a rooster, and one of the ducklings. And I prefer to rip my designs out as opposed to scissors and also as opposed to a bit of water on a paintbrush. It's just what works best with this particular rice paper because of how thick it is. After I finished tearing my designs out, I did go around and tear the edges to soften them as well so they were a bit more of an oval shape. To help my paper sit flatter, I'm going to make some little tears in the rice paper design there just so that it's going to sit a bit better on our curved surface. So I'm just going around putting little tears in my paper. You won't really be able to notice these once we get them decoupaged down. So I'm going to take Paint Couture's Decoupage Medium in Matte. I'm applying a generous amount of product in the area where my rice paper design is going to go. And then I'm going to position the design and press down and I'm just sort of taking my time pressing down working with those little folds and tears that I've added and once I'm happy with how it's laying and how it's positioned I'm going to take my brush and with what product remains on there I'm going to go over the top of the rice paper and start really smoothing it down I also grabbed a bit more product and started laying that over the top to seal it all in once I'd finished with our rooster egg design, I repeated the same process for our bunny Easter egg and of course our little duckling. If I inspire you to try any of the Paint Couture products used today, I would really appreciate it if you would use my affiliate link. I will put it in the description and on the screen. I just get a little thank you from Paint Couture in return. Next, I'm going to take Redesign's new Easter wreaths mold and I'm going to dust the wreath on the right with cornstarch and then work some of my dust air dry clay into the design. So you can see I'm just pressing it in first, just filling that up and then I'm using my fingers, my thumbs to really push out that excess clay. Once I finished cleaning up the edges, I flexed the mold and then flipped the design over. I find that gravity is definitely a big help here. And then I just started to pull my mold back and my casting released. I then added some of my Sealy's Quick Set wood glue to the back and spread that glue over the entire casting there to make sure it would all get stuck down well. And then I applied it over the top of our egg. I want this to go around and almost frame out our rooster design. So I'm just positioning it how I want it to go. I did have some issues with the 
casting there and I did pull a little bit of it off to make it a little bit easier for me to move the mold into position. At first I thought I wanted it a little bit closer to the design but then I decided to move it a bit further out so that it was closer to the seam of the egg so it would hide that. So once I have that in position I grabbed the piece that had broken off, tore off some of the excess but as you can see it does go back together quite nicely. I also then decided to cast the sweet bow that's in that Easter wreaths design there and we are going to be positioning that up the top of our egg so I'm just going to add a little bit more of my wood glue to the back of that and then position it in place. For our rabbit Easter egg, I'm going to be using IOD's Dainty Flourishes mold. I'm going to dust the smaller, more delicate designs down the bottom with cornstarch, and then I'm going to start working my clay into one of the designs. So those actually have mirroring designs that you can use, which is perfect for our eggs. So I'm going to cast this one, and this will go on the right-hand side of the egg, and the other one will go on the left-hand side. So I'm just going to flex that mold, and again, flipping it over, so that I can get that design out. I added some of my wood glue to the back of the design and then I'm going to position it on the egg and I sort of have it curving around and I'm just really making sure that it's going to hide some of the seam but also be a nice framed effect and of course I'm going to cast the other design that's going to go on the opposite side. I'm then going to add some glue to the back and position that on the other side. Once I had the other piece in position, I decided to trim off some of the excess down the bottom. Next, I cast part of the design from the Dainty Flourishes mold there. It almost looks like a fleur de lis and I'm adding some glue to the back of that. We're going to position that down the bottom and just gently press that down. And then I did cast the same design again and positioned it up the top, but I just flipped it around in a different direction. For our duckling egg, I'm going to be using Redesign's floral chain mold and I'm going to dust the center design with some cornstarch and then start working my dust air dry clay into the design. This is quite a delicate and intricate design, so you definitely want to take your time adding your clay there. And if you have trouble getting a nice clean edge, I definitely recommend using perhaps a spatula or even a plastic credit card and running that along the edges that can definitely help. Once I'm happy with how it's looking I'm going to flex the mold and then just like with some of our other designs I'm going to flip it over and let gravity help me get the design out. Next, I'm going to take my palette knife and I'm going to cut that top design off and apart. I'm going to add some glue to the back and then I'm going to be gluing that on the top section of our duckling egg there and just sort of having the florals drape down the sides. Again, I did want a little bit of room around the edge. I'm also gonna add some more glue to another piece of the floral chain casting, but we're gonna tip it upside down and put it on the bottom. Next, I took one of the bows that was left over and I cut off the excess floral chain from the ends there, added some glue to the back and we're going to actually glue that in this section where the two different molds top and bottom meet and then I cast the same bow again so I'm just partially casting this design here and we are going to put that on the opposite side so that the two sides match. I then let all of my castings dry overnight. The next day, my first step was to take Paint Couture's duck egg. I'm going to put a couple of drops of that out on a little artist palette. I'm also taking some of Paint Couture's pitch black chalk paint. I'm going to mix those together to get a bit of a darker blue. I'm also going to take Dixie Belle's Bunker Hill blue and just put a little bit of that out on a palette and also some of that pitch black to deepen it up. Ultimately, we need to start blending that background out to where our castings are. So I'm going to start adding that paint. And this was definitely a bit of a process, a bit of an experiment. I did a lot of layering of colors until I was happy with how 
it matched the rice paper design. In some sections, I just basically painted right up to our sweet little animal there because it was pretty tricky to get it exactly to match. So I'm just going to continue working my way around. And you can see I start to bring in that lighter blue that we created with the duck egg and the pitch black. And that really is helping it all blend together nicely. And I really just did just use the similar color mix on all of them, except when I came in with the rooster design, this had a a lot more light section so I did take paint couture's buttercream and I did use that to lighten that blue up a lot more. This was very involved so you will notice I have sped it up quite a bit so that this video didn't end up being too long. Once I was done adding that paint to the bunny egg, I did decide to then go back and revisit our little duckling egg. I wanted to bring a little bit more of that lighter blue tone into the egg. I felt like it looked a little bit too dark in comparison to the other two. Once my paint was completely dry, I took some more of Paint Couture's Buttercream and I went over the top of all the castings so that the color matched the back part of the egg. And also this tidied up any excess paint that I got on the castings from blending out the background on the rice paper. I added buttercream to each of the molds on each of our eggs just to tidy up the outside sections. Once my paint was dry, I took Paint Couture's Crackle Step 1 and I applied it to the center of each of our eggs. And you will notice a little bit later on that I also added it to the back section of the eggs. I am applying this pretty liberally. I don't want to go too light here. This is step one. So what we're doing is laying down a foundation for that step two. So you need to make sure you have enough product on there. So once I've finished applying it, I will let that dry for about 30 minutes. You want it to feel sticky and tacky to the touch. And then I came in and added it to the back, just like I said I was going to. I did that on each of the eggs. And then once that feels dry and sticky to the touch, I did then take out Paint Couture's Crackle Step 2. You will find that this medium is a little bit thicker, so it does go on a bit thicker. You definitely don't want to disturb your Crackle Step 1 layer, so I recommend using a bit more product than you usually would. I'm applying that to each of the sections where we applied the Crackle Step 1, including the back. I then let this dry for an hour. Next, I took Paint Couture's Light Brown Sugar Antiquing Glaze, and I'm going to be adding that over the top of our castings first. I really love how glaze has the ability to highlight and bring out all of the beautiful details in those castings. So I'm just gonna continue adding that product around the outside first. And then I'm also going to be adding that to the rice paper design and the back. So basically the whole egg is going to get this beautiful antiquing glaze. This is quite a subtle look though. So it's not gonna be super obvious on the rice paper design. So I'm just using a wet wipe to pull back some of that excess so that our antiquing glaze only subtly tints the rice paper, but definitely sits down in all of those lovely cracks. You can see when we move to the back how beautiful that crackle turned out. And I definitely got quite a bit of variety when it comes to the size of the cracks. I had some really large cracks, some that were lovely and small, uh, almost like fine line crackle. So I'm just going to continue removing that light brown sugar glaze and just really letting it sit in the cracks and the details of our castings. And of course, I'm going to be repeating the same step of adding that antiquing glaze over the entire egg for our bunny Easter egg and our duckling Easter egg. If you've been watching me for a while, you'll know that I do love an antiqued vintage look so I'm always a fan of antiquing glaze however if this step was a bit too grungy for you you could definitely leave this step out or maybe you could come in and you could do some sort of a metallic glaze or do some white washing it really is up to you and what style is to your taste
Next, I'm going to take Paint Couture's Rosebud Luxe Metallic Paint. I haven't used this one before, and I'm going to be adding it to our rooster design. We're adding it to the sweet bow that we glued down up the top. I really felt like this color tied in quite beautifully with the flowers that was on this particular rice paper design. So I'm just going to add one coat of this over the top. I don't need to get full coverage. I'm even going to be doing a bit of distressing back of this. As I said before, I love a vintage look. So we're just going to continue adding that. And then I decided to add a little bit of it to some of the flowers, but just the smaller flowers. So I'm just going to go around and start adding some of that to just those really delicate designs. I then took a wet wipe and started pulling back some of that metallic so that it looked more like it was a faded color on our egg. And then I also did a bit of light wet distressing on our bow. Once that was dry, I took Paint Couture's Bronze Luxe Metallic and I'm just going to add a little bit of it in the center of the bow and also in the center of a couple of the flowers. Next, I'm going to start on the duckling design. I'm going to take the sky blue luxe metallic and I'm going to add that just to the bows on this particular design. Again, you can see I don't need to get full coverage here, so I'm not being careful to get every little tiny section. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm going to start adding it to the other bows. I really love this bright blue because I felt like it still tied in nicely with the duckling rice paper, but it was also a nice pop of bright color. Once I finished adding that to the bows, I also added a little bit of our sky blue luxe metallic to some of the smaller flower designs around the outside. And then I took a wet wipe and did some light distressing to pull back some of that blue on the flowers and also on our bow. Again, we want this to look vintage, so it'd look a little bit funny if we had perfectly painted bows. I then took some Bronze Luxe Metallic and just like we did with the first egg there, I'm going to add some of it to the center of each of the bows and then I also added some of it to the center of the flowers that we added the blue to. For the third bunny egg, I took that Bronze Luxe Metallic again and I'm just going to be adding it to the Fleur de Lis style designs that we added up the top and down the bottom. I kept this one pretty simple. When my paint was completely dry, I grabbed some of my chiffon ribbon and I'm just going to do two loops and then tie those together to create a little mini bow. I don't want it to be too big. And this is actually going to sit on the top of each of our eggs. However, I also need to think about something to hang it with. So I just have this little ribbon that I got from Spotlight Australia. It's a lovely dark pink ribbon. I'm going to tie that on with just a simple knot so that it doesn't come loose. I am then going to take that chiffon fond bow that we made earlier and I'm going to use the wet wipe that I used with the glaze and I'm just using what's left on there to give our bow a bit more of a vintage look. I'm then going to use some hot glue on the top part of the egg so that we can glue our chiffon bow to the top. I then went into my stash and I got these little tassel attachments, I believe they are, and I am going to add a little bit of glue to the center of my chiffon bow and just glue that little beaded attachment to the top there. And then I'm going to tie a knot at the top there of our ribbon and that one is done. For our other two designs, I am going to add a blue ribbon to the top of our duckling egg. I felt like that really tied together nicely with the color of the rice paper. 
I glued on the chiffon bow and for this one I glued on a silver tassel attachment onto the center of that one. And for our other egg, our rabbit egg, I'm going to be using a gold sort of a tone ribbon for hanging. I'm threading that through the hole, then tying that on there. And then obviously I'm also going to be doing a simple chiffon bow for this one as well and gluing it in place. I did then also take a sort of bronzed tone tassel attachment in my stash there and I just glued that to the center as well. And here are our finished French country Easter eggs. I love how these turned out. It was so fun to work with the beautiful AB Studios rice paper and the molds from IOD and Redesign and of course the beautiful paint couture products. Let me know if you had a favorite out of these Easter eggs today. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment and share it out. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find most of the products used today on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.